In this episode, I will show you how to build an asset tracking solution. It will be handy if you need to track your shipments, your vehicle fleets, your heavy machinery, livestock, or maybe pets. Or not cats. I know where the cat is. He's right there. So what do we need to build? Well, first we need a device that is small, easy to maintain, and low power, so it can run on batteries. Then we need good network coverage so that the device can read sensor readings and send the data out when necessary. Then we need to know where the device is, so we need a positioning system. And finally, we need a backend system to analyze the data in real time and let us visualize the data, for example, in maps. First, we need LP1, a low power wide area network. Let's use Sigfox for that. And then we can use the Sigfox Google Cloud Platform integration so that when the device is sent data, it's received by the Sigfox network, and it's forwarded in real time to Google Cloud. And then in Google Cloud, we have a stateless event-driven backend system that streams the data in real time to the data warehouse. And then in BigQuery, we can execute GIS or geographical information system queries against the data. Then we need the device. It should just work with minimal maintenance. So let's use the PyCam Low before. It's an ESP32 microcontroller which has multiple radios, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LoRa, and Sigfox. The PyCam board consumes only 35 milliamps during idling and 91 milliamps during Sigfox transmission, but then only 18.5 microamps during deep sleep. So what we can do is have the board wake up at regular intervals, read the sensor values, transmit those with Sigfox, and go back to deep sleep. This way, the board's battery should last several months. Then we need to know its position. So let's use the PyTrack sensor shield. The sensor shield provides a three-axis accelerometer, so you know, for example, if your package is suddenly upside down, or if there's some heavy impact that may have caused damage. And then for positioning, the shield has four satellite receivers. Now let's take a quick look at the device configuration. The client code is written in MicroPython, and one of the things that the device does is try to get a GPS lock when it wakes up. So it will try to get an accurate position. And then it will also read the accelerometer values as well as the battery voltage. And all this information we want to send up to the cloud. So we need to pack these sensor readings and the GPS coordinates into just 12 bytes, which is the maximum payload size in Sigfox. Then we will send, using the Sigfox radio, these 12 bytes. And then depending on the configuration, the device will either go to normal sleep, which is in development and testing mode, or deep sleep, which is for production systems for preserving battery power. So now let's connect the device and see what happens. OK, the device is booting up. It's connected. It will try to get the GPS lock. It did. We have the coordinates here as well as the sensor readings and the battery voltage. And now it's sending these 12 bytes data payload over the Sigfox radio. So what I can do is I can copy this hexadecimal 12 bytes binary string to the clipboard. And in the terminal here, we will use a utility, which is part of this open source solution, to parse or decode these binary messages. So we can see here that the device sent indeed the coordinates, the accelerometer values, and the battery voltage. So what happens in the network side? Well, first, the Sigfox platform receives the message. And here we have configured in the account the callbacks. So the Sigfox network will use this callback configuration to forward the data in real time from the devices to Google Cloud, in this case, to these cloud functions. So we have cloud functions receiving the data parsing it using the decoding function you saw earlier. We have service messages reception, as well as streaming the received data to BigQuery, the data warehouse. So here in BigQuery, we can see example rows of data received from the Sigfox devices. We have the device ID, the binary data payload, the original, as well as the parsed, opened, normal payload, if you will. You can see coordinates here the accelerometer values, voltage, network reception quality level, the local Sigfox operator, as well as the Sigfox Atlas estimated coordinates. 
So now in the data warehouse we have both the estimated coordinates as fallback as well as the satellite coordinates when those were received. So now what we can do is have actionable insights as well as visualize this data using GIS geographical information functions in BigQuery. Let's do that next. Let's run a GIS SQL query that shows the last four table rows data in maps. All right, looks good. The points are near the office. Okay, so functionally it seems to be working, but we really should do a real life asset tracking test. So we need something to track. Well, how about this one? Let's bring this along. And let's go. Okay, I think that should do it. Back to the studio. <laughs> All in the name of data science. All right, now let's see. Do we have any new asset tracking data? Let me refresh BigQuery. Yes, we do. There's a lot of new rows. That's promising. Now let's go to the visualizer. And let me refresh this query. Boom, there we go. That's the route, it worked. Whew. If you want to try this asset tracking solution yourself, we have fully open sourced it, together with my colleague and good friend Marco. Marco, say hi. Ciao a tutti. So please see the link down below in the description to download the tutorial and all the source code. And as always, if you like it, please click the like button, click subscribe and leave a comment below. And see you next time. Bye bye.